So this client just canceled. Like they are a brand new client, which we know has the highest rate of cancellations um, ever, basically in any uh, industry, but especially with our pet sitting company. And we have certain policies that we've created to work with that. But this guy just canceled, brand new client, just did his consultation, which we do um, as a freebie. He did a paid trial visit, which is basically to iron out any kinks, make sure they work well with new friends that they haven't met, etc. And everything went smoothly. Very nice client. Home is probably um, in the uh, half million dollar range. So a higher end client for our area of Central Florida based off of their household uh, cost and nice dogs overall one's a little timid so he cancels and he messages me text messages the business and says hey we're putting our house up for sale um suddenly and we are going to be actually showing the house during that week that we had scheduled while we're away and we're instead going to board the dogs uh because we can't have them stay at the home while we may potentially have showings totally makes sense right um shocking that you go well did you not know that you were selling your house a week ago he actually he actually didn't the house in their neighborhood that is like a dream house for them compared to their current house location wise went up for sale suddenly last week and uh, after our consultation and so they decided to jump on that opportunity so that's what they're doing and so there's two ways this could have gone and it's all based off of your policies for your pet sitting company and how you want to dictate them. So let's talk about that. First of all, my name's Amber Van Denzen, owner and founder of Attaboy Animal Care, pet sitting uh, located in Central Florida, certified professional pet sitter, veterinary technician of 13 years, bachelor's of animal science, yada, yada, yada. But let's talk about our company's cancellation policies and how this can be a point where you have the ability to show empathy, which in the long run will make you more money. So first and foremost, every company um, that I've looked at that has their cancellation policies listed online or companies that I've met throughout the years that I've asked them about their cancellation policies have a variety of ways of interpreting and how they handle cancellation policies, um, mostly depending on the type of service that is being offered. So typically their policies may Maybe slightly different for overnight sleepover pet sits versus drop in versus daily dog walks. And what I've seen is yes, I'm doing my makeup while we're doing this, by the way. So let's do a get ready, chatty pet sitting version. Um, is that they depend on the service, and that ranges anywhere from a full cancellation uh, that gets a full refund within two weeks of a cancellation or two weeks prior or more. Um, some have a 48 hour limit. Some have a day of cancellation. Some you don't get a deposit back. Some you do. Some you put down a different type of deposit depending on the cost of the total invoice. Some you put down a, a general cost such as 50% across the board or whatever. So it's kind of based off of your personal preferences, what you seem works for your company and what you truly vibe with. Now, let me tell you what we do at Attaboy. Um, we don't do overnight pet sitting. Thank God. <laughs> um, we do mostly vacation-based drop-ins and daily dog walking. And our policies are, especially for new clients, because we have different policies for new clients, which means they have not booked a service yet with us before in the past. So they're not quote unquote reliable. Um, and let's be honest, most, some daily our dailies we have aren't reliable either but let, let's not get into that whole subject but new clients are more prone to cancellations why they tend to come into pet sitting for two reasons either that they have used to be boarding and the boarding is full and now they have to find alternative means or that they uh, had a friend or family member that typically does it and now is not available or they had a bad experience and usually the first two, they come into that and it's because we are the last resort. They've already booked their, you know, vacation. They really need someone to take care of their pets and this is our options. And usually, obviously, we are higher cost concept wise out of pocket than the first alternatives, friends, family or boarding facilities. So because of that, we are their last resort. If something else pops up that's cheaper, they are going to abandon ship with us and 
go back to that cheaper route because they haven't seen how good pet sitting is. They haven't drinking the juice, if you will, of pet sitting. So they don't know what they're missing out on yet. So because of that, they're a higher cancellation rate. So because of that, our policies state as a new time client, their first invoice um, of services, set of services, well, if it's, whether it's a week of vacay or a week of dog walking, doesn't matter, 100% paid in full within 24 hours of their trial visit that they had or consult, um, required non-refundable, non-transferable. So that means they won't get a refund, they won't get a credit, and they can't transfer that money to a different like set of services or a different person. Why do we do that? Uh, because we had one too many new clients that canceled super last minute or in advance or whatever. We already invested in a free visit, a consult. We've already invested taking the time to talk to them and set up their online account. And more often than not, when they canceled, they never came back. So our written policies that are on our website, that are in the emails, on their onboarding emails, that are in their confirmation of invoice emails, all state new clients, non-refundable, non-transferable, 100% paid in full deposit. So they now know what they're getting into. That is our standard. So any client that comes in sees that and says, I know what I'm getting into and I'm okay with it. But, but eventually there will be new clients that understand it, they pay the invoice, they're totally feeling it, they're all about it, and then they cancel anyways, for whatever reason. Now, more often than not, since we've implemented that uh, policy, which is, you know, a couple years old for us, actually, we actually had not much of a cancellation policy prior to that, um, we have had um, people need to cancel new clients, and that is perfectly fine, but this is what happens. It happens two ways. Either they're douchebags about it or they're really understanding and they're just trying to figure out what's the best way they can handle the situation. So first situation happens. Let's do the easy situation. They're nice about it. They call, they text, they email, and they say, hey, we had a situation come up. We have to cancel those services. We understand your policy is non-refundable, non-transferable. Is there any way we can get our money back? This is, and they usually explain the situation. This is why we ask. Or they can say, can we have a credit? Or can we transfer it to maybe they have a different service scheduled soon after, whatever. Let's say the scenario is, which we've had, all of these are true. <laughs> the scenario is that they were on the way to leave and their one and only car that can take that trip to North Carolina, you know, to the North Snow is now in the shop and they don't have the part for the next week, so they had to cancel the whole trip. Okay, out of their control. Yes, you could say they could have serviced their car properly, they didn't plan properly, whatever. But let's just say, we're gonna call that out of control. Say someone got COVID or the flu or sickness in general. Say somebody died. Say, you know, all flights got canceled. Or you could label those as acts of God, as they do. Um, all of those, to me, are out of their control and if I was in their situation that like something like that happened and now I'm looking at a loss of a vacation which is mentally disappointing potentially financially loss as well or a car that now costs thousands of dollars to fix I'm thinking cha ching cha ching cha ching and now I have to cancel my pet sitter which I may have lost maybe two to eight hundred one thousand plus dollars of this non-refundable non-transferable that I had no plan of ever canceling because I was totally gung-ho but shit happens now what so of course if I was in their shoes I would go and say please maybe they have some type of mercy maybe they'll give me something back um totally understanding that they booked and I scheduled and they filled those spaces and I they may not be able to cover them again blah 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 and they may have a loss of money but I must still ask who wouldn't um so they ask and they tell me the scenario and they're really nice about it more often than not we are totally going to give them a credit. I'm not going to refund them. No. Um, unless there's something that, that caused them to move and there's no way they're going to be a client again. I'm not going to refund them, but I will totally give them a credit. Why? Well, more often than not, you now have an opportunity to look like a good person. You And obviously, I'm hoping you are a good person, but you can now show them you are a good people. You want to be human to them, right? And so what usually happens is this. They give the scenario that I understand would be a reason for a valid cancellation. 
even though it's against our policies as a new client, it's not like they're trying to use a different service. Could they be lying? Yes. No, I'm not worried about that. Am I asking for proof? Absolutely not. One, I don't give a shit. One, it's a waste of my time. So they do that. And then this is what I say. I say, you know what? Hey, B uh, Bob, whatever their name is, our policies do state that your first invoice or your first set of visits is 100% non-refundable, non-transferable, unfortunately. I said, but it does seem you're going through a hard time right now or insert you're going through an act of God or a major life change. <clears throat> and because of that, we want to be human to you. So we will gladly <clears throat> offer you a credit to your account that will expire within a certain amount of time. Um, typically, our credits don't expire because I'm not too worried about that. But in that moment, I'm going to do a little bit. And it depends on the scenario. They may have given me some more information. Or if they already have a booked, scheduled, another service, I will apply that credit towards that future service. Again, that will be non-refundable, non-transferable, one time only. Every single time we've done this, every single time, I can guarantee you in the past year, I can think of four scenarios that this has happened. And every single time, not only are they, wow, that's super nice. Two, they're super grateful. Three, they always rebook because they have that credit on file now. And then four, they usually are the persons that are the best referrals. Why? Because they were in an awful situation and we helped them like humans should. Now, did we lose out on that first invoice? Yes. Did we do all that scheduling potentially and all those sitters are going to lose out? Yes. More often than not, these scenarios occur more than 48 hours prior, which our traditional cancellation policy is 48 hours uh, before you can get a credit, less than 48 hours, no credit. Um, so it usually hits within that anyways, which our staff doesn't get paid if cancellations are more than 48 hours in advance anyways, less than 48 hours they do. But usually when I go to my sitters and say, you know, hey, major life event, because I hire good people and I say, hey, major life event, and they trust me as a an owner and a, their boss. When I say, hey, major life event occurred, I really want to give them a credit. I'm going to give them a credit. Um, so because of that, uh, and it, you're, you know, your visits haven't occurred yet, you will not be getting paid. It doesn't happen often. We're talking maybe four to five times a year, and it could be different sitters that it's affected. Every single one of those staff persons didn't mind because I say, you would want the same to be done to you if you were in this situation. And they all agreed because we hire good people, right? <laughs> so sure as shit, this client that just canceled, brand new client, booked a week of services, starting in 10 days, eight to 10 days or so, buying a new house, have to have it sold suddenly type thing. They said, thank you so much. I highly appreciate that. Actually, this was their first service for vacation purposes. Actually, I've been thinking since we met you, we want to start daily dog walking. What just went through my brain? Cha-ching. Okay, I just turned that $300 invoice to potentially a 6000 by end of year invoice for daily dog walking because I let them have their credit that they're going to use, that they already paid for, and I gave them a month time frame to use it for this particular situation because he needed something within the month. Um, anyways, but I've even done six months, whatever. And he was appreciative and he was understanding. And now I just made a rapport with him that he's now going to do daily dog walking for the rest of the year. Um, hello. So it is, that does not prove that having some flexibility and humanity in our policies and remembering that we are working with humans and we are, even if we're massive million dollar companies, even even if we are just the solo person that that's a loss in our pocket for that week, look what that can do to you. Now, does it happen every time? No, but this is why you have standard policies from the beginning. This is why they're clear and concise from the beginning. This is why you repeat those policies multiple times so there's no way they could have missed it. We also verbalize that obviously at the consultation as well. So they are quite aware what they're going into. And then now when a situation occurs, which I feel like occurs in most of our newbies. Um, more often than not, we still have the highest cancellations with new clients, but they understand and they always rebook. Versus when we did not have this policy and when they went to cancel and they expected it now because it wasn't laid out that this is our policies and this is why and you're taking up a space that we can't refill and they didn't understand it because they didn't think about it because they don't live in this world, obviously. They didn't think about that. So now they do, and those persons that are coming in as clients are understanding and empathetic towards our staff and how our business works, and they're appreciative 
to our type of business because it's giving them the freedom and flexibility. They know what they're getting on board with and they know it versus before they didn't. It was an expectation. Well, I'm not using your service. Why would I pay for it like anything else? Right. But when you teach them, because it is about teaching, they will be and stay with you longer because they understand and they aren't appreciative and they appreciate you and your staff. So it comes down moral of the story is be a good fucking person. And that's all I have to say today. Have a great day, guys. Bye.